here today for the same reason. We're all here to conquer our sex addiction. Mm. And we've been through steps one through four. I'm glad somebody's excited. <laughs> um, determine if you have an addiction. Decide if you need professional help. That's why we're all here to receive professional help. Um, find a qualified counselor. That's me. And discuss treatment. And number five, which we'll t cover today, we're going to set aside shame or embarrassment. So basically, we're at the step in our recovery that we should talk about our issues. You know, we should lay it all out on the table. You know, just so we face these things. You know, that's why we're here. So this is a safe place. You guys are so welcome to share how you guys feel. You want to start? Who wants to start? Let, let's get somebody to start with their problem. I acknowledge the challenges in battling sex addiction. I've been there. Heck, I'm still there, albeit in different stages of denial like everybody else. The idea that attaining ambitious goals can be just as fulfilling as sexual satisfaction does not negate seeking professional help. Yes, therapy and support groups are steps towards regaining control over one's life. These resources empower individuals to confront their addiction and embark on the arduous journey of rehabilitation. A truly stupendous amount of thinking has gone into sex okay. without purpose, which, yeah. which, which is actually quite a silly action in the absence of purpose. It's, it's a bit silly. Well, so why are you doing it? Because it everything. makes the limbic system happy. That's why. That's why. But it's pretty absurd, really. <laughs> but, but I mean, this is a lot of computation has gone into how can I do more of that with <laughs> procreation not even being a factor? This is, I think, a very important area of research by NSFW. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, can you imagine what Napoleon Hill would think of today? Not only do we have way more sex, but we spend way more time pursuing it. Um, and for me, this boils down to the question I always ask on this channel, which is, does it serve us? And if it serves us, which part of us does it serve? Are we, are we aligning with our higher selves or are we being slaves to our limbic system? At the heart of sex addiction lies our limbic system, the primal force responsible for regulating emotions, pleasure, and motivation. This ancient part of our brain has, for countless generations, driven us to seek pleasure and reward. However, when addiction takes root, it can lead us down a perilous path, wherein the relentless pursuit of immediate gratification overrides our rational decision-making and self-control. Because of these things, plus our limbic systems, we are conditioned to always be seeking immediate gratification, to be looking for the next best thing, to not hold the course. And uh, this is also called shiny object syndrome, which usually refers to how serial entrepreneurs pursue multiple projects at a time without seeing any of them through, um, but it's perfectly apropos to describe the way some people pursue other people. And here's the thing. I think it takes a person of serious strength of character to say no to what's new and shiny, to say no to the, uh, to the dicks, d dickstractions, <laughs> the dickstractions. This is, I think, a very important area of research by NSFW. <laughs> An intervention for chronic masturbators and sex addicts is incomplete without sex transmutation. If the lofty goal is to organically tame this insatiable sexual appetite, i.e. without resorting to chemical castration, then sex transmutation is the means, orgasm is the motive, and ambition is the opportunity. Everybody, including addicts, has an ambition, i.e. an aspiration that transcends addiction. You just have to identify it. Success in any ambitious endeavor is, in and of itself, orgasmic. The gratification that such success offers is akin to the one derived from both intercourse and masturbation. Here's the idea I'm entertaining. We humans are the ultimate creators, second only to our creator. Um, I mean, look around you. We, we built this. We sculpted our reality. This is pure primordial power. Uh, and when you have sex with someone, you temporarily relinquish that power. Um, and that doesn't even have to be an alchemical thing or a mystical thing. Uh, it could just be interpreted as the time, energy, and money, maybe, I don't know, that we put into the pursuit of sex and the act of it. Alternatively, 
if you retain those things, you literally have more resources to expend as you will. And I mean, that's it, right? Like it's your, it is your creative energy. You do with it exactly as you please. And I think, I think that's a big part of the reason we're here to create. In conclusion, the question of whether sex addiction serves us is borderline wishful thinking, yet it invites us to reflect on the balance between pleasure and purpose in our lives. Sex transmutation, with its potential for redirection and renewal, beckons us to tap into the reservoir of our own inner strength. By harmonizing our innate desires with our loftiest aspirations, we can navigate human sexuality, and in doing so, bridge the thin line between addiction and ambition that's preventing relapse guiding us towards a more purposeful existence. Ultimately, it is our choice whether we are slaves to our desires or captains of our own destiny.